What I must speak to you, I must speak of the seventh day or the rest day. The seventh day or the rest day. It can also be called the millennium day. We will find out why. So the seventh day is when everything was rest. It's a rest day where you can rest from whatever you're doing. Now, when I go to work, okay, or when you go to school, check your examples. They give you homeworks. Especially, you know, Friday, they always give you homework on Friday. Because you, need, you know you have two days at home. And they want you to go and work. But they call it a rest day for you. They see, they see that you start Monday to Friday, come to Saturday, they say, okay, and Sunday, let's, them, let's give them a rest. Do they give you a rest? They don't. They give you homework to go and do. You see? They give you homework. It's not a rest. They give you homework. What? Listen, it's a rest, rest for them. But you still have something to do. So you have to use your brain again. Oh my God, I was in school on Monday. I used my brain and everything, working now and this and that. And I want to rest on Saturday and Sunday. You give me another work to go and you call it a rest. So what kind of rest is that? It's a rest because you didn't go to school. You are home. But still, you still got something to do. Isn't it? It's like me, if I'm a kind of person who decorate the houses, that's my job, Monday to Friday, I go to work, I go and decorate people's houses, put in paints and everything. And I work Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday. And on Sunday, I say to my rest day. Why don't you work on Sunday? Oh no, I work on Friday. I need to rest. But when I go home, I look at my house, it's all mess. Ezra put all paints everywhere, draw the walls. So what I have to do, I have to take, I'm saying I'm on my rest, isn't it? I have to take a pen, start painting. Isn't it? But still, I'm in my rest day. Okay, that's my rest. Rest from what? For my work. Even though I'm doing the same job that I do at my work at home, I'm still in my rest day. Okay, are you with me? So, let's go on the next one then. But God has his numbers. He got like one, three, seven, fifty. Okay, three is a number of grace. Okay, seven is a number of perfection. Our completion, like we did, we saw he worked for six days and seven days, he finished his work and he rested on the seventh day. So, Brother Adam here is saying the message to Hebrew, chapter four. He said, he's saying this, he said, um, He said, listen, listen close. He said, listen close. The seventh chapter, the I mean the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. And Baron Kochun says, seven is the number of what? Can you read it? Completion. That's what he said. Okay? And there is a number of life. And three is the number of life, he says. Seven is the number of completion, and he gives the complete Sabbath. So seven is the number of completion. Finish. No more work for God. He created six days, and the seventh day he finished completely. He finished his rest on the seventh day. Okay. So six days, we say, is the number of men as a my brother, they answered. And my brother says seven is the number of completion. It's perfection. And some other places you will find, go to the next one, you see my says say seven is the number of worship. Go to the next one. Okay. If we read it, it says, God made himself perfect in three. He made himself perfect in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, three office of one God. He made himself perfect in justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, come perfect. What 
purpose of grace, he makes himself perfect in three coming. First time to redeem his bride, second time to receive his bride, third time in the millennium with the bride. And everything is perfect in three. And the seven is the worship number of God. God is worshipped in seven. Completed, now perfected and completed. So, seven also is a number of worship. It's a number of perfection, of completion. It's also a number of worship. So, people think when we talk about self of resting, We are resting in our physical body. We all know we have a resting. We also, got, as God had a seven resting, we also have our seven resting. Okay, we should call the millennium or the, the Sabbath the rest for us. Okay, if before we go further, go to the next one. Becky, next one. Here, Brahman is saying this. I believe that all the old things was a type of the new to come. Okay? All the old things. The Bible, when you read in your Bible, the Old Testament, was, was, was a type. Other places, he said, it's a shadow. So the old things from Genesis, where he created the seven day wrestling, it was a shadow, it was a type. That means a shadow, when you see a shadow, it's not. It's me, isn't it? When you see my shadow, it's me. When if you come from there, you see my shadow. So that's the coming. But that's my shadow, isn't it? The real me is me when I come, when I show up. You can see my shadow, but that's not really, really me. I can do whatever, any movement. You see my shadow moving there. But until you see me, you know that that's the real person who was the shadow. So the Old Testament is just a type. The, of the new things, which is what we are living. So the old one, God rested. Okay, let's read the Bible. He said, um, "I believe that all the old things was a type of the new to come. What Israel was in the natural, okay, we are in the spiritual." So what Israel was in nature, when they were in Egypt, when they were doing whatever they were doing, doing the, 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 the offering, taking land, they were doing naturally. When they told them, you shouldn't kill somebody, it was natural. They told them, the take members was, you shall not kill. That means if you get a knife, you're going to kill somebody. You shouldn't do that. Otherwise, you'll be arrested, they will kill you as well. But in a new to come, Jesus changed it. If you go and read Matthew chapter 5, you see that Jesus came. He didn't take it away, but he, he, he brought it in another level. That killing is not just physical, it became something spiritual. Something that you do not see. You do not kill somebody with a knife anymore, but you kill somebody when you're angry with somebody. With the criminal day, killing people there in Congo, in the war that we have in all day. There's no difference with a person who's angry with another person. See how broad but he brought it from physical to spiritual. The seventh day, let's go. He finally said, What Israel was in the nation, we are in the spiritual. So we are Israel spiritual. If you say, so you ask him, Are you Israel? Yes, I'm Israel. Come on. A black person in Israel. Are you Israel? See how black? See? If I'm come, no, no, I'm in Israel. No, you are in Israel, spiritual Israel, not physical. See, God brought things, He changed things. It was physical and now it's spiritual. And He said, God leading Israel naturally. When God was leading the children of Israel naturally from Egypt, they were going to work to a promised land, isn't it? God was naturally, God was leading, it was a pillar of fire. Do you see there what they are walking? 
everyone in their lives. They're all walking, they're going for it, but it was natural. All in a desert, they're all walking in a desert. Has anyone walked in a desert before? It's very hot. So they were walking, that was natural. They were all walking in a desert with their eyes, following the pillar of fire, seeing that Moses was there. They were all following. Him. He said, God living in Israel naturally was what He's doing for us. How? Spiritual. Now, we are not working in the desert like the children of Israel are working. We are not working like that. They were working in the proper distance. That's why I find it difficult for people who want to see things physically. Because here, we're going to see everything. It was God led and natural. But we ask, it's fit in, not that natural. Us is spiritual. You see people who say, oh no, I'm, I'm, I was in Egypt. God saved me. Which Egypt did you go to? If you ask, which Egypt did you go to? That's when you were in the world. The Egypt that we are talking about is the world thing. You see someone say, oh, I was in Egypt. God saved me. And I'm on my way to the promised land. And then when you tell them that Jesus has come, hey, wait, I want to see. Okay, show me which agent did you go to. Show me your passport. Let me see your passport. I'll see if you've been agent before. You see, you, you become like a liar. Now, that one you accept the scripture. When you come to Jesus has come, you want to see with your eyes. You see how people are. I've been in Egypt. And I'm working the promise land. Oh, so there's another quote I'll show some of our friends say, We are working the promise land. Uh, we are working the desert now. Go to the promise land. Who's working the desert there? There's no desert here around you. There's no desert around you where we all have to walk in the desert. Go to the promise land. Now. So we should take this kind of thing that people want to bring things to see with their eyes. When they can't kind of prove to me that they gain in Egypt. They come to me to be in Egypt, but we accept that. Even when we say we are eating the body of Christ, you will see the same people saying they want to see things physically. I want to see it. But you see them saying they're eating the body of Christ, which is bread. And they're drinking the blood, which is the wine. Come on, listen. You want to see things physically. I want to see that blood and I want to see that body. See how it goes. So that shows that everything that we do is spiritual. We are accepting it according to what Papa said. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Listen here to Papa. He said, I will on my side here. So we are speaking of the seventh day, okay? We all know that the seventh day is the old days of the shadow to come. And Rabbi Adam says, everything of the old, what God was doing naturally. So us is doing what? Spiritual, is it? Now, let's go to the next one, the next the pillar of fire. Rabbi Adam is saying this. Now, when he brought the children of Israel out of the wilderness, out into the wilderness, he led them by a pillar of fire. Are you listening? You're ready, yeah? Are you ready with me? Okay. He said, out into the wilderness, he led them by a pillar of fire. Is that right? The Bible says he did. And he went before them. That was the anointing, the Holy Spirit, Christ, that went before the children of Israel. Well, if he is the same as he was then, he is the same man, the same person, he is everything that he was then, he is now. Now listen to that part on uh, the line. He said, and as he led the children of Israel then, in the natural, he is leading the children to, he is leading the church today in the spiritual. Is that right? Do you believe that we are in the wilderness? Do you believe we are in the wilderness? Are we in the wilderness? You have to believe, but 
But let me say we're in the wilderness, now you see. It's not something. The wilderness where it's a physical, physical wilderness. But we are in the wilderness. But I'm saying, do you believe we are in the wilderness today? Oh, I'm sorry. We, um, do you believe that we are in the wilderness? We are on our way on the road to the promised land. See? So the wilderness now is not a physical wilderness. It's not a physical wilderness. So people should stop disturbing other people saying, you know, a physical, a physical thing, in other words, or a natural thing, is something that you can see with your eyes. Okay? Somebody. Or you can touch it and see with your eyes. But Babanan said everything that he did with them, it was just a shadow. So the real thing is us in the spiritual now what he's doing. To us, you don't need your two eyes that you got there. Me, me, I've got these four eyes like my brother here, or four eyes now. We don't even need these four eyes to see things of God. It's spiritual now. Okay? So, the only way you can see God, but I am saying, is in me and you, we are the reading crystal. We are the Bible working, we are Christ Jesus today. But people want to use their eyes here to see. If we spoke about last time about see. I think we'll, we'll come back to that message next time again. Just to remind us again about seeing. People like to use these eyes. They, they trust this eyes so much. Now, if you trust in these eyes and you love this as the way you're trusting, Baba Nam said we are in the wilderness. So show me with your eyes where is the wilderness here? Here, in this place. See, this, it's not about us, it's about faith now. It's about believing by faith that we are in the wilderness. Now listen, but I'm saying here. Now, when they got over into Canaan, where were, okay, where were they going? They were coming from Egypt, going where? To Canaan, okay? So in Egypt, they were suffering. They were beating them, treating them very bad. Making them work. They were working there, doing the thing, heavy stuff, beating them, do whatever they want to do to them, killing them. So the promised land has to go to a promised land. And the Bible says we are working well to our promised land too. We are in the wilderness. So listen to that promise here now. Listen. When they got over into Canaan, did when they got over into Canaan, so that's where they were going, they got there, did not represent heaven. So, Canaan of the old time, it wasn't heaven. Today, the way they were working, they have their way, they have their age, we have our age. Our age is the worldly thing. Okay, are you with me? So, their worldliness. Working in the wilderness, we have our wilderness as well. Working as a Christian, doing your life, trying to, 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 to leave the word of God. You're working to, to get to a promised land. And they were working physically, and we are doing it spiritually. Every time when you're praying, God, you've got to help you to, to live a Christian life. For one purpose, to get to the promised land. Okay, you want to get it. And they were working as well on their side physically to get to the promised land, which is Canaan. So, Rabbi said, Canaan is not heaven. So, we also, we are working hard. We were working where? Well. Okay, because it's already the past continue. So, we were working hard to get to our Canaan. There, Canaan is not, which is not heaven. Rabbi said, it's not heaven. It's not me saying, it's Rabbi He it said, Canaan did not represent heaven. The red part says they had war in Canaan and so forth. So in that Canaan where they were working, going to, there was war there. There were things going around there. So we also are working to go to Canaan. So listen to what I'm saying. What's Canaan represented? They say it's represented the millennium. So they were working to the Canaan. We walk into our millennium as well. Canaan 
went to Ambassa, Kenan, now in Aosa. There it was physical Kenan, us is a millennium, isn't it? Okay. There they have war. And we in our Kenan, we have war as well. It's not heaven. I remember I'll show you. People are saying, why are you guys are saying you're in the millennium and there's war around? You just bring them the same creature. They say Canaan is a millennium and they had war and so forth in Canaan. Now listen, when they got to Canaan, they had war. So they were running away from working in Egypt. They got to the Canaan, they had to work there. And the millennium, I will read another quote somewhere. It's the seventh day. It's the rest day. So there can end, it was the rest day. So what kind of rest you got there? You say you're going to rest, but you're still working. They had to work. And you said they were continuing and there was war there. But the you can there there's still some war there. Oh, thank God, it's not, we are not like them because then there it was. Oh. Let's go, let's go, continue. So, he said, so we are, listen to that. So we are going into that. We are on our road now to the millennium. I believe it. So, as they were in our road, walking, going to the millennium, we are walking as well, we were working as well, going to the millennium. They are, they got the millennium, the cannon, which is the millennium, there was war there. They had to work. They had to fight with the people that was in their land anyway. So rest day, what is the rest day? God rested on the seventh day. And the millennium is a rest day. So how do we rest? Now if you ask people, people people tell you guys you say millennium. Millennium, it was I see a lot of people talking about it. It's a rest day, it's a time we have rest, peace. You ask them what kind of rest are you taking? Okay, the seventh day is a rest. What kind of rest? You see, you the way the way you want to rest in your house. You lay in your bed, you lay your hand like this. Is that the kind of rest? You still have to go through. You still have to get up and do the cleaning in the house, in your bedroom. You still have to do that, isn't it? So, is it, is it, so rest, people are thinking rest is, oh, I don't know what they're thinking about rest. Rest from what? When you say you're resting, you have to rest from something. From what? God rested from doing Creating from the creation. So like me, I'm not if I'm not working today, oh I'm working tonight. So I'm not resting, but I'll rest soon. So resting from more from my own work. You're not going to work. That's me. You're resting from your work. But you still have to do some work. When someone calls you at home, oh can you come? Oh no, I'm busy, I'm doing some work. Oh, are you working? No, I'm home. Oh. So is it not you're resting? If it's your rest, you shouldn't even do anything. You should stay at home, not even touching anything. You should sleep laying in bed. So people are thinking that the kind of rest you lay in bed, someone will pick you up, feed you, because <laughs> because they're thinking you can't, you won't do anything. You'll be there. That's mean you'll be like a baby there. You know, you're there in bed, you're there in rest, and they come feed you, wash you, dress you. So you know that's not the kind of rest. So let's read the Bible and say what's the rest. It's a bit long. You can read it. And he said, now let me show you. What does the word Sabbath? Okay. The seventh day is also the Sabbath. Okay? The seventh day is also the Sabbath. It's the rest day. It's the millennium. Okay? Let's read the Bible. He said, now let me show you. What does the word Sabbath mean? Anybody knows? We just raise your hand. 
Sabbath. This is the week. There's a sister who answered. My mom said, a sister says, rest. See, Sabbath means rest. Okay? Rest, exactly. S-A-B-B-A-T-H. Sabbath day means rest day. Get your margin, get your marginal reading in the Bible and look rest day. Now, let's go to Hebrew, the fourth chapter. Read quickly and now. I run down straight to 146. The same message question and answer on Genesis. 146 it says, Now, at the end of it all, he left out the fourth commandment. Here Abraham was reading Matthew chapter 5. When he was talking about in the old time, he was saying, that shall not kill, that shall not commit adultery, that shall not kill. But Jesus came and brought him another way. Okay? And listen. He said, now, at the end, he left out the fourth commandment. Now, that was, remember, the Sabbath day, and keep it holy. Now, he said, come unto me, how he that labor, and her heavy leather, and I will give you rest unto your, unto your what? Your soul. You see what it says there? Hold on a second. Go to the next one, Ricky. Yeah, that's the one. You're unto your soul. See, I will give you rest unto where? Okay. That's the rest we will continue. So the rest is not something is physical. Because your soul, your body, people are thinking, when people think about rest, they think of their body. For them to rest. But here, he said, I will give you rest unto your soul. But when he's explaining the Sabbath day, okay, then he's explaining the Sabbath day. What is the Sabbath day? He says, rest where he knows. Okay, let's continue. He says, now watch, whosoever commit adultery, must be stoned. That's what the Old Testament. You commit adultery, they will stone you. They had to be right in the. What am I reading? Okay. I know what I mean. They had to be right in the act of committing adultery. Is that right? And it had to be physical then. So the adultery that they were committing has to be physical. For them to be stoned. Okay? And then he says, is that right? And it had to be physical then. Whosoever I kill, it had to be a murderer. So it has to be physical at the whole time. Killing is well, when you want to kill someone, it has to be physical. You can't tell somebody at the whole time, you just angry with somebody. I'm angry with you, I don't want to speak to you, I'm angry with you. For them it was normal. At least that one. As long as you didn't kill somebody, it's fine. You can get angry. But when Jesus came, he changed it. You, you can only be guilty at the old time if you kill somebody with a knife or whatever, you are guilty. But when Jesus came, he changed it. It's no more killing somebody like that. It's getting sick, just get angry. You say, God, how am I guilty? I didn't kill them, you did. How? You got angry with him. <sighs> See, that's how it is. Getting angry now, it changed from killing physical and get angry. Okay? So listen, he said, but Jesus said, whosoever looked at the woman, his soul, spirit, nothing in his body, his soul, okay, yeah, his soul redeemed. It wasn't then, it was his scholar master. See, the law was, now he said, whosoever looked upon the woman to last after her, had committed adultery already in his heart. Now, but when it's continued, yeah. Now, mm. okay. I'm about to finish it. So, you see. Uh, what am I? 
Now he said, whoever looked upon a woman after he had committed adultery already in his heart. Now he said, who oh, you've heard them saying, that's not a kid, but I say unto you, his whoever is angry with his brother without a cause has killed already. Now listen to one four nine. He said, now he said, in other words, about the Sabbath, he said, come unto me, holy he that level and heavy laden, and I will give you rest unto where your soul, Sabbath unto your soul. In bracket, Baran said, not to the physical body, to so the rest, the rest is not something physical body. Like now, people say, you know, millennium. If you say millennium, why are you still working? Uh -uh, it's not about physical. I said, no, must, this physical body still has to go to work. So the rest, the millennium, the rest that God gave the seven, the seven is on in your soul. That's why you rest from the world. To finish, we will continue next time. Huh? Go to the next one, Becky. But and now, when the time of the promise drew near, God raised up someone to bring them to the land. Here, we're talking about the children of Israel. Okay. So, how many in the class tonight? Who that, who that one was, knows who that one was. But I was who, how many knows who that was? And he says, Moses. Notice, a very, very real type of one, of our one, that was given to bring us to the promised land. So Moses, the type of Moses, but I is the really, the very, very type, that's in the same one as one as in our days here. Okay, it's one that was given to bring us your promise. Christ, we have a promise because our promise is spiritual rest. Just like Moses, who was brought, he was raised in those days to take them to the promise. Land. And so we have a promise, and our promise is a spiritual rest. Where they were, and he said, where theirs was physical rest. There, in the time of the, the children of Israel, their rest was physical. Okay? So our rest is spiritual rest. Where? In your soul. So forget about these people saying the millennium is a physical way, you have to rest physically. They should go and sleep. If they want to rest, they should go and sleep and rest in the bed, rest in the house. Because that's not the rest that God gave to us. The last one, or before the last one, maybe. Next one. The message of Revelation chapter 4. It says, While the children, while the children is level, they can sin. Okay, before I read that, what are we resting from? God rested from his work, isn't he? For what he did. After seven days working, he has to rest. Okay? And here, brethren, say, why the chief has labor, in other words, labor is work. Okay? Against sin. Okay? So, what against sin? That's what we're doing every day. That's what we're doing every day. We just they turn your mind to be a sin. You're working there. You know, they go to church, they preach you. You should not do it. You should not. You go home on your school. You're trying to be a Christian. You don't want to sin. You don't want to. You're working. They can't sin. You're working so you can be a good boy, a good girl. You're working so that you want sin against God. Anything go contrary to the word of God. Listen, he said, why the church has labored against sin for 6,000 years? And the seven thousand is the the millennium. So we say that God created the earth six days. One, two, three, four, five, six. God created the earth. So we we read in 
First Peter, this is second Peter, first Peter, remember, it says one day is equal to one thousand. So one day is equal to one thousand. Is it one thousand? One thousand years. Is that what I said? The beginning. So one day before God, it's a thousand years. So God works for six days. That's when it's a thousand here, a thousand here, a thousand here. A thousand here, a thousand here, a thousand here. So all together it makes six thousand. Okay? Six thousand days. And Barbana Day he says this. He said, the church has labeled against sin for six thousand years. The same that God be God what is what? For six days to God. And for us, it's thousand. The church has worked for six thousand years, and there's another one thousand left. One day, that's the seventh day. It's also one day. So that's when God rested here. Okay? It's another thousand. So, he said, the church level again sin for six thousand years. And the seven thousand is the millennium. That seven thousand, the last one there, is the millennium. God, the children who worked hard us not to be sinners against sin for the whole six thousand years here. We worked hard not to be sinners, to be good boys, to be good girls. You're a Christian, how a Christian should be. You don't want to sin. You're trying your best. We're working against sin. So Jesus, God also was working to finish his work, to finish his, his thing, his uh, creation. And on the seventh day, God rested. Let's wait, but when he says, he says, they say, like God made 6,000 years to be the world. The 7,000 he rested from all his works. And the church labored against sin for 6,000 years, and the 7,000 the church rested. Now, see where we rest here. Against sin, no more sin. Here, on the 7,000. Now, why am I saying about no more sin? We will get it. We get it. So, we rested against it because we were working 6,000 years. We were working because we were already. I will show you that we are already, even here, maybe even going further past this, but I will stop there. The seven. We are dead on the seventh. The rest day. That's where the church rest. We walk six thousand years. So how did you get that six thousand years ready? Okay, fine. Let's go and see probably the last one and finish. Go make it. Now, in the future form, but I am saying this. Notice, this is still, uh, notice, this is still not referred to this millennium reign. The thousand years is not the new earth. Okay. They already, we know, the thousand years is not the new earth. It's not heaven. I've read it before, and here the one is more coming again. It's not the new earth. It's still on this earth. Okay? This is where the man is in this earth. Not someone else. Here. He said it's not the new earth. It is not the new earth. See, the millennium reign is a different reign. That's what we go into the millennium. But that isn't the new earth, the new heaven. So if somebody is telling you, you meet someone saying, you see the millennium, the millennium, how come this, this, how come you see her cars? We start to think about the millennium. But the Bible says there's no new, there's no new earth. This, that's if you don't even earth. You see the same, same out here. There's no other earth where we're going to go from He said this is not a new one. And it's not a new earth, a new earth. It's not just the same one. So someone will come and tell you, how come you see the millennium in this side where there's car, where you guys are working. Tell them, so ask them where, where are we going to go for the They should tell you where. Because it's not the new. After the new, that's what we have, we're going to have the new, the new. 
So there's no, there's no new So those people should forget about it. Okay? Tell them, bring them. You can even write it down. And when they come to you, show them that. And listen, he said, it's not you have and you have it. No, no. That's just a rest place. So how do you rest where? In your soul. Uh -huh. It's just a rest place. A rest period. Not at all the new heaven and the new earth. For you see, in the millennium, we have things that we would not go into. That. Now, this is the ball part of it. It's a type of the old seventh day. So the old seventh day, where God rested. Hmm. My God. The old seventh day when God rested is the same with the millennium. It's the type of the old seventh day. Out at Eden, the seventh day, after he made the world, the seventh day he rested in Eden and the millennium. So the seventh day is the millennium, as I said. Now, how do we get it? You see, see, the world was now, the world has now almost 6,000 years now. This world. How long is this world been? 6,000 years old. You see, every 2,000 years, it has a destruction. See, the first 2,000 years, the flood came. When the flood? You know what time? So, the first 2,000 years, this is first, it was the time of Noah. Noah in those 2,000 years. And God came and he destroyed water. Everyone will live. So, no 6,000 is gone. Okay? And then continue. Uh, the flood, he baptized it with, with what? Water. Next 2000, Jesus came to sanctify it and claimed, drop his blood onto it, call it his. So the next 2000, when Jesus came here, okay, this 2000, Jesus came. Are you following me? So the first 2000, it was Noah. The next 2000, Jesus came. How many days so far? Four days. So it's 4,000 already. So when Jesus came, it was the world was already in the four, four days. It was already in the 4,000 years to us. And the fourth day to God. Now, let's go to the next one. How will come again? Uh, now, has king with his queen at second 2,000. What does he do? He comes and gives his rest prayer. Okay? After the next 2,000, there's another 2,000 here. After the next 2,000, that's when you come and give his rest prayer. Let's continue with it before I show you and get you up here. To zero three days, it says, and then burn them. Burn them off and claim his own and put his own back on it. Now notice, not the perfect world, this millennium. It's the top of the seventh day that comes the world throne of judgment. The world throne of judgment which we will be the next time. That one comes after the seventh day. Okay? Then come the world throne of judgment. Mm, we are still in the millennium in the in a day and one thousand years. After the next 2000 comes the millennium. So, we, next time we're trying to speak about when was this other 2000 years? Now we're in 2000 what? Ah, we're going to speak about the next 2000 years and see where we are if we are already in the seventh. So, if we're already in that seventh day, so people should stop saying we are not in the millennium. 
because Rabbana is so many scriptures that we've read. He said the seventh day is the millennium, is the type of the seventh day. We God bless you. Any questions? Any questions on the seventh day? You see, when I eat meat, you know, some people will ask me, I know many people that will follow the video will ask you, how can you still eat meat? You're going to eat meat. Don't worry. You can come and take music. Yes. Nice. 